Hey everyone, welcome back to Contractor Evolution. Uh, this is Benji. I hope you're having a, a really great week. Question for you. When selling to your prospects and customers, do you ever get tired of answering the same exact questions over and over again? Are you even sometimes bored by the sound of your own voice, endlessly running through the same talking points, addressing the same concerns, constantly explaining the same process, sometimes even multiple times a day? Because uh, I know I certainly have found myself in that situation. Well, certainly a part of sales is just being good and even enjoying having a similar conversation with a multitude of different people. There's also a case to be made that a lot of what you call your sales process is just a laundry list of FAQs, of frequently asked questions that you cycle through because it's the way it's always been done. This is why I'm such a big proponent of investing in strong sales collateral, which is simply content designed and developed to complement your sales process. And it can come in the form of PDFs, videos, it can be templated emails, client guides, infographics, flow charts, uh, good quality photography and other aids that visually support the verbal explanations you give clients about your product and services. Sometimes they're digital, sometimes they're printed, but they virtually always make your sales game 10 times easier. Furthermore, think about this, um, how much of what you do is highly technical and not actually that easy for your average lay person to grasp, right? That's why sales collateral can be instrumental in having your clients understand exactly what you do and thus have more realistic expectations from you. Better conversions, less questions, and more reasonable expectations. And the stuff isn't that hard to make. Jamie Overly, our guest on the show today, was a marketing and sales executive in the tech space for 15 years before buying Boulder Landscape in Design with her husband, Ryan, in Boulder, Colorado. After taking control of their new entity, she had to deal with the fact that the previous owners had done little in the way of brand building. And she's done a lot of work to the business's public persona since then um, and is now one of the busiest shops in town with work booked out for the next year plus. But she gives a lot of the credit for this to four super simple pieces of sales collateral that she put together relatively quickly. Today's conversation is about the easiest pieces you can build for your contracting business, why they matter, and how you can get started. I really hope you enjoy it. Let's dive in with Jamie. You're watching Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Jamie, welcome to the show. I'm really excited to see you. This is going to be a fun conversation. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's start with kind of a, let's start with a layup, all right? What what do we mean by sales collateral? Can you give us your definition? I put some notes and thoughts down as well. I just want for the listeners, let's get, let's get exactly clear on, on the definition of, uh, of what good, good sales collateral is. So at its highest level, think of sales and marketing collateral as the toolbox of assets that... Um, consists of things from email templates to landing pages, uh, websites, PDFs, you know, those types of assets. Mm -hmm. A company creates those and it's really, the intent is to um, set a tone of professionalism right. across your brand. You're trying to create consistent messaging and c consistent narrative throughout. Yeah. Um, staying on brand throughout the whole process. And then finally, just really conveying those key points um, throughout your customer journey. So it's like this is content that you would design and develop that's that's there to support your sales process. And this you could you could you could this could come in the form of a bunch of different um, you, you could. You could build this in many different ways. It could be video content. These could be templated emails. They could be PDFs that you print off and give to the client at a certain stage in in the sales process. Um, it's it's a, it's essentially things that you have built for your sales team to make their life a little bit easier and educate the customer a little bit more effectively. Is that is that too simplistic a definition? No, I think that's spot on. And you know. 
I think of like a lot of marketing and sales content. I refer to it as my Taco Bell strategy. <laughs> it's all the same meat, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, but do you want it in a soft shell, crunchy shell, you know, whatever it may be. It's the same thing. That's across so the board. deep. I've never, the Taco Bell <laughs> strategy, that is such a good way. That is exactly what it is. You're basically saying the same talking points, the same collection of talking points, a bunch of different ways. Sometimes it's yeah. written, sometimes it's spoken in a video, sometimes it's repeated over the phone, sometimes it's in an email, sometimes it's in an automated text message, What? sometimes it's on a, a brochure that you give them. But it's, it's like Taco Bell, it's like always the same like six it's or exactly. 10 ingredients. <laughs> you know, they're getting rid of Taco Bell in Canada, just as a personal aside, I'm absolutely devastated about it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> I mean, happy. I'm gonna have to fly down and see you. You're not losing that much? No. But it's, there's, there's times. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, it serves, it serves an important purpose. Okay. So, um, Taco Bell strategy, great way to put it. Some of the, can you maybe think of some of the, like just the, the benefits that it, that it creates for a contracting business like yours? Like things that come to my mind, just a, 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 an easy one is like, it's, it's a fair, it's low hanging fruit. It's an easy way to play big or look big and really appear. Um, I don't want to say more professional than you are. That's implying that you're not professional, but you can, it's a nice way to kind of flex your brand and, and maybe appear more developed, more mature than your business indeed is. Is that, is that a good way to put it? Totally. It evens the playing field. You know, it's like social media is a big component of that. But, um, you know, let's just start with the website. You know, so many people do a lot of online research right out of the gate, you know. And so it's like by the time they contact you, they they already know that they want to use you. You know, they've looked at your products. They've looked at reviews. They've looked at all these things. And so it's like when someone contacts you, it's not like they just opened up the phone book. And said, let's call them. You, you know, it's like th they've done their research. They've checked and you so out. Think, they've checked you out more than you might think at that point. Oh, for sure. For sure. And so it's like having your website be your storefront and having that really dialed into who you're trying to target and giving them that specific messaging. It really creates a magnet for your like target audience and therefore it generates more leads and higher quality leads. So that's definitely like a great starting point. So on that note, like over the last, let's say 10 years, do you think there's been, a, I, I'm, I think there's been a change here and I'm wondering if you see something similar. I suspect that large platforms like Amazon, um, the rise in e-commerce, the popularity. Uh, I mean, if you look at how many purchases are made off of mobile devices now, it's some absolutely insane number. You look at the way we are changing how we buy and consume things online. And I think that, that, that there's a downstream effect. Consumer habits and preferences have, have really evolved and they've become they become more picky. They do more research. They want to know a lot more about what they're buying. And that could be the case for like a blender, they're ordering off Amazon. But I think that there's it sort of that effect rubs off on the way that they would select a contractor. And they're doing, they're probably doing a bit more digging. They're reading the they're reading the reviews on Google. They're finding out your history. They're doing a scan of the website. They might be calling a reference, like they're doing more than they were 10 or 15 years ago, which was just sort of a bit more, um, I don't know, laissez-faire about it. Well, we just, we need, we need someone to, in your case, you do landscaping. We need someone to do our yard. Let's just call the, call the person in the phone book. And that's, that's not the world we live in anymore, is it? Oh, you're spot on. I mean, it's like, I find most of my customers touch several of our online resources or, you know, platforms, whether it's some element of social media or looking at Google reviews or better business bureau, or even, you know, they see our trucks driving down the street. There's usually several touch points that someone sees with our branding. Then they go to our website, then they contact us. So it's like they've already, but if one of those are out of whack, mm. it could throw off, you know, their confidence in mm -hmm. you. So it's like, it, you definitely have to have everything pretty dialed in mm -hmm. that someone could see you and, and even like you know having your crews wearing um the same t-shirts mm -hmm. it just represents your branding it's solid branding mm -hmm. and it's so important today it's um 
it's a really cool feeling to have this working for you as well. Like I can sort of just speak to our experience with, with building a lot of this out for Breakthrough Academy over the last five years, this, this podcast in sort of an indirect way is, is a form of what we're talking about. It's a brand building exercise to some degree. And I can tell you as a salesperson and like marketing executive within this organization, the, the difference in tone from before where it's like, no one really knows who you are. You get on a call, you get, you do a meeting, you meet people at conferences. Nobody knows who you are, what your brand is to then having people come up to you like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I know about you guys. Like I've heard about you here, or I, I checked you out here. I saw you here. And like, so the conversation from a sales perspective, when you're trying to persuade, when you're trying to create new business, when you're trying to uh, turn an opportunity uh, in, into a sale or a deal for your business is just so much easier, so much more fun um, and so much less of a grind. And I think that's another thing I just put on the, the list of benefits here for business owners to understand. If you want to reduce the selling load on your sales team, or if you're still the sales team for your own business, which is probably the case for a lot of you, and you want to make that easier for yourself, there's a handful of extremely easy things that we're going to talk about in a few minutes here. I'm looking forward to it. Um, that you can do to create that effect for yourself uh, and reduce the skepticism, the people squinting, like, who are you? What do you guys do? Um, so it's it's a, that, that's, a, that's a nice thing to look forward to if, if you want to move the needle on this. The other thing that I'm just going to throw out here is setting uniform expectations. This has another nice effect in the sense that it um, if you're maybe worried about your different salespeople selling things in different ways or setting expectations or promises with customers in different ways, it feels inconsistent and that concerns you to, to some extent. Having good, clear sales collateral is a really great way to bring uniformity to your sales process and the promises that are being made to your clients, right? Oh, completely. I mean, especially if you're bringing on a new salesperson, it's like, they might not remember all the, the key points to hit. So it's like having that sales collateral already built, it just reassures me as the business owner that's like, I know the customer is getting that message that I want them to get. They're hitting the main and, points. Yeah, I'm not I'm not losing yeah. sleep that this person is forgetting to say this because it's right there on the PDF that we give them or it's packed into the brochure or it's in the email, whatever, right? Totally, spot on. And, and you had mentioned setting accurate um, expectations. It's like, that is so key mm. in today. It's like, I find I can avoid conflict or just miscommunication throughout the process by setting good expectations on the front end. And here, let me give you a little yeah. kind of story I heard. And I think it just so paints a nice picture as to the value and the importance of setting good expectations. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're on vacation, okay? And you're like, oh, I'm in this new city, I want to find the best restaurant, like I want to find the best food in this city. And so you start looking online and in your mind, you're thinking like white tablecloth, you're thinking four course meal, like five star restaurant. And you, you know, you're searching, 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 and you find this place and they're like, okay, this go to this restaurant, it's the best food in the city. You go there and it's a hole in the wall and you're like, wait a minute, what is this? Yeah, it's a Taco Where's Bell. I'm like, what's, totally, what's, totally. What, am, what am I doing here? It's like, if, if, if you know that it's a hole in the wall on the front end and you're like, awesome, this is going to be a bit of an adventure, but I'm so excited. You go in like super pumped versus being maybe disappointed because your expectations were out of line mm -hmm. with reality. And mm -hmm. so it's like having documentation or sales collateral or all that kind of stuff that helps set good expectations for the customer it really just saves you a headache on the back end. And it also like gives you some legs to stand on that if a customer said like, well, no one ever told me that, right. you could be like, "It's right." actually here. I did. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you remember this document that I sent you? There it is. So, you know, you raise a really good point there that I, I wanna clarify, which is that, um, you know, good good sales collateral isn't always just selling. It's not always just like we're the best and we use these great products and we follow this super dialed in process and our customers are always happy and look at all these smiling people. There's certainly some of that. There's actually quite a lot of it in there, but the other use case for it is maybe sharing some of the it's not sharing some of the downsides or sharing some of the more realistic expectations about how this goes. Hey, just by the way, it's a good thing for you to know up front your yard is gonna be a complete 
disaster while we're working there. You know, put that in there. So it's, it's not always about the sunshines and rainbows. It's also about some of the more, uh, maybe maybe like the less desirable, but more realistic aspects of, of getting work done with your business. Oh, totally. And it's kind of like, it's a softer way of addressing things than having this like lengthy legal contract that you get people right. to sign. It's just kind of a nicer like, hey, your plants are going to go through transplant shop like as soon as we plant them. They're not going to look amazing like our our photographs that we take six months to a year later look, you know, yeah. and just be prepared for that. Your your tree's not dying. It's just going through its own phase, you know, so be ready for that. And it just, it saves a conversation. Yeah, totally. Sure. Totally. It's not like doom and gloom. Like, Hey, prepare for the worst is going to be terrible. I think the tone, if you're doing it well, it's just like, Hey, just FYI, just F just FYI. This is also going to happen. You need to be aware of that. So you're not shocked when this, this part of the process happens. Um, okay, great. Anyway, let's, let's, let's move on. Cause I, I really want to get into these four things that you've built. I think it's, they're just really clever and, and, uh, and address, uh, address some really, in, uh, valuable parts of your sales process. Um, but I wanted to ask you bef just before you built this, do you remember the pain point, the struggle, um, the whatever that you were going through with BLD that kind of pushed you to make this stuff? Like what, what inspired you to, to get cracking on this and, and build out what you have? Totally. So Ryan, my husband and I are newer owners of this company. So we bought an established company and the company that we bought had no brand identity. I mean, the website basically just said, Hey, we do anything landscaping and we want everyone to call us. And that's just really a recipe for disaster. You know, when you're not really focusing in on who your ideal client is and what type of projects you want to do. And so you know, I did a lot of research across the board of like, who's our competitors? What is their branding like? And I found, you know, there's a good mix of like high, very high level, um, big project type contractors, landscape contractors. And then there's always like the guys that are like two guys in a truck, you right. know, that have like no website. Right. And where we fit is right there kind of smack dab in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's the company we bought. But I was like, OK, how do we convey that? in a way that makes sense. You know, it's like, I knew I wanted to like come across as being friendly and approachable to our customers, but also be very specific as to who we're talking or targeting mm -hmm. and what type of projects. Right. So I think the first thing that made sense to develop was really scrapping the website and starting, you know, with a brand new website, targeting those people. Mm -hmm. Um, next, you know, once you kind of figure out who you are and who you're trying to attract, then it's like, I need to make all my uh, resources look the same. So it's like, I need my Twitter and my Facebook and my Instagram and blah, 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 blah. I need it all to look s consistent, mm. you know, same colors, same messaging, same logo, because you don't want customers to be confused when they find you. You want it to be very clear that they're landing on your you know, spot. Totally. Um, yeah. Like I, I mean, so, there, there's, there's enough skepticism already. They're probably, they're actually on some level, like looking for a mistake or an error or a reason to say, Oh, this is a fake company or this is not, you know, this isn't the level of professionalism that we're looking for. So that consistency with little things where it's like, if you use like the color purple in some of your, like on your website, it's the exact same color of purple that needs to be in the sales folder. Not like, not, a, not a little bit off, like the exact same one. So that, you know, I'm using colors as an example, but the font you use, the tone of voice and the copyright, all of that stuff needs to be uniform from top of funnel to bottom. I think it's just to summarize what you're saying there. Totally. And let me give you an actual very real situation as to the value of the importance of this right now. So our company name is Boulder Landscape and Design very key words for our area, right? So it's like, um, you know, people will be looking at like Boulder landscape and they're really just looking for like landscaping Boulder here or there. I have a, it's not even a competitor, a fake website that is using our brand name and trying to steal our customers. It's, it's a legal battle, but whatever. And I think having 
my logo everywhere, my branding everywhere and everything. That way people don't get confused if they're going to this fake company or if they're landing on my right. resource. Right. So it's like, it, it's definitely, there. there's so many facets as to the importance of having this dialed in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but you, you guys, you guys were basically experiencing this, um, I don't know if you'd call it an identity crisis as a business, but you'd bought this thing and then you as the new owner do have to go through the exercise of like, who, who are we? Right. And, and who do we work with? And that, that prompted the build out of, you know, you mentioned your website, but, but also these four documents we're going to discuss in a second here. Is that, is that fair to say is that, that was the driving force that kind of inspired you to do this? Totally. It's like, let's just create a consistent brand across the board and then let's come up with some resources that help really reiterate that messaging. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's get into the meaty part here. Um, Let's talk about these four things you've created. There's a, uh, please correct me if I call these the wrong thing, but there's a pre-estimate email. There is a consultation folder that's used um, I, like actually at the estimate or design meeting. There's another thing uh, in my on my notes here. It's sort of like the what to expect between now and the project start document. And then there's a post project care package. So these are four examples, guys, of really great pieces of sales collateral that are not particularly difficult to make that are going to support your sales team, um, set expectations more uniformly, um, and just sort of make your overall life a lot easier as a business owner. By the way, before we go in, if you're listening to this, you want to check out a few examples of these. We're going to, um, uh, we may not do all of them, but we'll give it, we'll give a few examples of these exact, uh, these exact pieces that Jamie's built so that you can see them with your own eyes and and hopefully be inspired to build your own. Uh, those will be in the link in the description. So let's go through these top to bottom. Do we want to start with a pre-estimate email? Totally. Cause that's, I mean, that's where the customer journey kind of, you know, when they interact with us, that's where they kick off and start. So we always have, you know, that initial phone call and everything and talking to people, trying to learn that qualifying call, learn about their project, see if we're a fit. Mm-hmm. If they make it through that process, then uh, we always want to send out a confirmation email. And that's such a, it's so much bigger than that. So I'll kind of go through the format of this confirmation email and the purpose of it. So I always start every email template with like, thank you so much for reaching out or thank you for choosing us. You know, it's like, there's just, people don't say that enough. And I think it, it, goes a long way. Uh So, you know, thank you so much for reaching out to us. Um, you know, it was great talking to you here. Here's my understanding of what you're looking to do. So I recap to make sure we're on the same page, um, as to what they're looking to do. Uh I confirmed the appointment time of like when the design consultation is going to happen. I introduced them to the designer. So that way, you know, there's that nice roundabout, um, introduction. It's not like they're showing up at the first time. Um, but then what I do next is I include a link to our website or to a landing page that basically says, you know, here, here again is our process. Even though we've discussed what the design, you know, all the way through project, what that process looks like, Mm -hmm. I have it, um, dialed in our website or for our landing page. And I reiterate, so I send them the link, like as a reminder, here's a link to our process. And it's just because most people, you tell them something once and they don't hear it. It's like they have to see it and read it multiple times. And I just want to make sure that that's so clearly conveyed. Or also if they want to share it with, um, you know, someone else that might be involved in this decision, Mm -hmm. you know, so they're not having to try to like say it. So I want to give them all that information. Um, I include a document of like, Hey, here's what um, is going to be covered in this design consultation. Mm. You know, here's some questions to think about. Like, and it really gets people's wheels cranking. So that way, the design consultation is really productive, and not just us talking. You yeah. Know? So, so mm-hmm. that's let's get them those resources ahead of time so they have time to think about. It. So kind of have some homework. Mm-hmm. And then um, finally, I include a link, then a second link to our website. And it's a landing page. And it's uh, why choose Boulder Landscape. And this is really the salesy part of this email. And um, the why choose Boulder Landscape page, it's a pretty robust page. 
Um, and so I really use it as a tool in multiple phases. But what it includes is I want to start with the soft skills that maybe other companies don't. That you feel you guys are mention. really good at. Totally. I mean, it's like I talk about like, you know, we've been in business for over 40 years. So it's like kind of a, a call out to our longevity. You know, we're not a shady company. We've been around. Um, I talk about like, you know, we're going to give you consistent communication throughout the process. Uh, once we start your project, we're not going to leave. And, and the irony is, is most companies do all these things, right? But no one calls it out. No one takes the space to put it on their website. And so in essence, it's kind of a little bit of fear mongering because if a customer comes to my website and they're like, oh, they don't, you know, once they start a project, they don't leave. I don't see that on, you know, this other company's website, like, huh, you know, maybe that's not important to them, you know? So it's kind of creates a little bit of question yeah. with calling out some of these soft skills. Um, and then I also talk about like our maintenance offerings, our warranty, all this stuff. But then I go into um, customer reviews and testimonials, and then I have pictures of our favorite projects. So really this why choose Boulder landscape page is a pretty hard hitting sales page. So I use that in different s spots of our customer journey to try to kind of convey the value of why someone should choose us. But you know, you're doing, you're kind of hitting all, you're, you're hitting all the things here. Yes, there's like a features and benefits page that sells the why someone would work um, with Boulder Landscape and Design. There's also some expectation setting stuff where it's like this time, this date, this is how long it's going to take. Please be ready in this way for the estimate itself. The other thing that I thought was really good that you added is like th the, I don't know what you call it, like questions to reflect on or things to consider, or you, you equip the client with the tools necessary for them to do the right amount of mental prep for the meeting so that it's productive. One of the suckiest things as a salesperson is to be at a design meeting or be at an estimate with someone that has no questions, doesn't fully understand the scope of the project that they want, um, and just seems like totally lost at sea with your overall sales process. You just, it, they're not fun. They're super deflating for a salesperson. You feel like, man, am I really that boring that like I'm putting people to sleep? And so, but you, you need to, people forget, contractors forget, like, homeowners don't work with contractors as much as contractors work with homeowners. For them, it's like a once in a decade long thing where they're going to get their landscape done. They might only get that done a few times in their life. It's not like they're sh grocery shopping and they sort of know how to navigate this world really well. They don't. So the better you can set them up for success, for them to be a good client, for them to be a good prospect for you, you're smart to do that. And we do the exact same thing. We've got a really great email where there's like a video to watch. Hey, this is how I want, these are the things I want you to reflect on coming into the meeting with you, meeting with me, give these things a think. It's going to make it way more productive. Um, so that's really good stuff. And then, and then, yeah, the fear mongering thing is never a bad idea. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not cheesy to point out some of the things that you do exceptionally well and perhaps your competitors don't do as well. And you also know that clients are worried about those things. It's like, hey, we are not fill in the blanks. We are not uh, whatever, fly by nighters. We don't we don't start jobs and then leave jobs and then come back. If you if you can kind of play on some of those fears that you know your ideal client would have about working with a contractor, absolutely um, good idea to include those. Let's talk about the consultation folder a little bit. So this is something that's actually a, is this a physical thing or a binder or something that, that your, that your designers, your estimators, your salespeople have with them, uh, that, that the clients see at those meetings? Yeah. So I, we came up with all these documents, we get them printed and we do it pretty reasonably. We have them printed at FedEx. It's not like crazy fancy. I don't know, some, Exactly. And then I have folder. So we, it's something to leave with the client. I think there's value in leaving something tangible with every client that they can reference um, after the meeting. But really, this kind of came about because it goes back to it's like I want to have consistent messaging. I want to make sure that customers had this information. And this was the best way to know that they're definitely getting it. So, um, yeah, our designers show up for every initial consultation and this folder, it it's one of those things. It's like I built the first few documents and it's something I'm always adding to. Yeah. So one of these days it is going to become a binder by the, <laughs> give me a few years. But um, 
the main documents that I have in there right now is uh, there's a two page overview about Boulder landscape. So it talks about like, you know, we've been around for 40 years. This is the type of projects we do. Here are the services we offer. And it's just a nice high level about us. Keep in mind, this is also on my website. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. This is all on my website, but I just made it in print form. Mm -hmm. um, the next document is why choose Boulder landscape. Yet again, it's basically that same web page, just in PDF form. Um, the third document is the BLD design and construction mm -hmm. process. So it really just outlines like, okay, you know, we come over with it for the initial consultation, then we're going to put together a design plan for you. Then, you know, if you want to get our construction schedule, we require a deposit, you know, and it just really lays out every phase mm -hmm. that they're going to hit with us. So that way they know, and there's not surprises. Um, it's like a bunch of visual, it's like a bunch of visual stuff to support the verbal conversation that's being had between the designer and the prospect, but between the designer and the homeowner is it's, 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 you're not repeating yourself necessarily. You're just kind of reiterating probably a lot of the points now with something tangible and visible that they can consume, you know, quietly with a cup of coffee versus being told it verbally by the designer themselves. Right. Totally, totally spot on. And, you know, like I said, it's like I use marketing collateral or sales collateral to really um, overcome some challenges that we have pretty consistently. So a while back or kind of when we were first getting things going, we found we ran into a lot of customers that's like, they're like, oh, we want to renovate our backyard. And we're like, cool. And then we give them the estimate and they were shocked, you know, it's like they felt like they, in their mind, they were thinking landscaping was going to cost $5,000, where the reality is it's like to renovate your backyard, it's going to be $50,000. Oh, so they know? just had sticker shock. They were just like, oh my God, I didn't think it would totally. be that much. Okay, got it. Totally. So one of the things I created, it was basically a tool to soften that blow and it's how to determine your landscape budget. And it just kind of talks about like, you know, if you're really looking to add value to your house, you know, this is how you would think about it. Like if your house is worth $500,000, plan to spend $50,000 on it, you know, and then it goes, it talks about um, so much of the landscape budget is used up in demo and setting that foundation and the things you don't necessarily see, but are so important to making sure that a project is done correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk about like how to pick a reputable landscaper, what to look for, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's like, even if you don't choose us, I don't want that person to go down a bad path. Um, and then the last thing I do is I put together like side by side pictures of similar projects, like front yard renovations or, Here's some zero scaping to look at. And I can say these projects cost between X and X. So that way I'm not having to give a specific hard price, but I'm also setting a tone and setting the expectations. Like this is not going to cost you $200. I just get that just out of your head out there. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to be clear yeah, about something. If, if you wanted to cost $200, we're not a fit for you. Right. So it's like, so that was kind of a, an expectation document that came up um, to help circumvent a sh an issue we were running into pretty frequently. Do you find that it's effective, this consultation folder when you, when a, uh, when a, when a designer leaves one at a home or, or maybe they, they leave one at the coffee table where they go out and look at the yard on their own and then come back, like, do your, do, are there questions that are being asked of your designers? Are there conversations that are being initiated by the clients that lead you to believe that they've gone through the consultation folder and, and, and used it the way that you've designed it to be used? You kind of get what I'm asking? Like, is it, are, are you getting good feedback from your designers because clients go, oh my God, I didn't think to ask that. I better talk to you know, who, uh, Sheila or Kim or you know, whoever and, and get clear right. on something. <laughs> Yeah, I think it more in essence just sets a really t a solid tone mm -hmm. across the board. So, for example, we've been booked out um, over a year for the past three years consistently, right? And it's like I really believe that customers are open or willing to wait that long to get a, a project done by us, and it's because we've set such a professional tone and we've answered their questions before they asked them 
in every step of the process, you know? And so it's like, we just really build that trust mm. from the get go. And I think this folder is just a supporting piece of that. So on the note of being booked out for a long time, the third thing I had in my notes here was you guys, had, you guys have, um, I, I think as a result of, of this backlog, which is a good problem to have problem nonetheless, but a good problem to have, uh, you guys have created a what to expect between now and the project start document, which I think you send in the mail. Tell us, just tell us a little bit about where that came from and, and why, why it's a part of this list of four. Totally. So, um, you know, after we kind of go through the de design and estimate phase and everything, and finally someone commits, they're like, yes, I want to use you. I want to be on your um, List. project schedule yeah. and everything. You know, it's like, I, I really want to make sure at this point someone's committing. I want to keep that momentum high, that energy, and I want them to not have any sort of buyer's remorse. You know, it's like there's nothing scarier than writing someone a check and saying, See I trust that you're going to. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. That's a lot to ask of a customer. And I get that. So, um, yeah, after someone commits, I sent them like kind of a whole packet of things. So I personally write a thank you note to them, a handwritten thank you note, which I get like that's not necessarily scalable if you're doing a lot of projects. But for us, we sell about 40 projects a year. So it becomes very it, it's an easy touch point to add a personal feel to it and it also kind of just is an easy one upper because I, I guarantee that most other companies aren't doing that. So that's part of the packet. And then I also try or I have a what to expect for your um, between now and your project document that's mm -hmm. included in that. And it's just kind of like, you know, you're going to have a lot of you're going to be looking at your design plan for the better part of a year. You're going to have questions and probably want to make some tweaks to it before we get started. Just know that we're going to set a meeting about six weeks before your projects start. And we're going to go through all your list of questions, you know, so don't feel like this design plan is what you're like tied to mm -hmm. for the whole time, you mm -hmm. know, and then talk about just time frames and stuff like that. Like, you know, a few weeks before your project, one week before your project, the day of project, you know, we're going to be doing a walkthrough. Here's who's going to be involved. And then I also put together a list of um, just things that are good to keep in mind. Like, hey, we're going to be in and out of your yard. Have a plan for your kids or your pets, whatever. Maybe let your neighbors know. Mm -hmm. Construction is kind of loud and kind of messy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it goes back to just setting those expectations in kind of a soft way that it doesn't freak people out, but it also is very realistic mm -hmm. with them. So, mm -hmm. so that's what I do to kind of help keep that momentum going and, um, make people feel confident it's that good. they pick the right landscaper. And then, and then, at, so let's kind of fast forward a little bit after the project gets completed, there's another, there's another sort of like, thank you package, um, loyalty building package, something that hopefully gets you gets you some referrals. What's sort of the intent of that that final piece? You might think, hey, the deal's over, the project's paid, they're happy customers, like we're good, I don't need to do this. Why do you guys, why do you go do, uh, take that extra step and do a, like a post-project care package of sorts? Right, so it's kind of, there's, there's two objectives, you know? It's like one, I wanna leave people with a positive, um, just feeling about us, you know, it's like, of course the work is great, but it's like, I want them to just remember us positively, you know? So it's like, I want to acknowledge that, but I've kind of got some selfish ulterior motives there too. You know, it's like, it is ultimately, I'm trying to get referral business and I also want reviews. So it kind of accomplishes both. So my post project package, um, I start by, I send uh, uh, some cookies to be delivered there. I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, Cheryl's. It's like a, a sub company of Harry and David, and you can get these amazing sugar cookies. So I just go in and I have it scheduled to be sent on pretty close to the day that we're going to be done. So a package that the customer's not expecting shows up on their door. Who doesn't love packages of cookies showing up unexpectedly on your door? I don't know. You'd have I mean, to be absolutely insane <laughs> yeah. to not be excited about it, it, that. Yeah, totally. Um, and then I also time that out. I have an email template already built 
that says, you know, thank you so much for choosing us. We really appreciate your business. We've enjoyed working with you. I do make sure to call out a specific thing about their project so it doesn't look too templated email template. Yeah, exactly. Totally. So, you know, I say like, you know, Brian mentioned that the water feature turned out spectacular, you know, can't wait to take pictures of it next year or something like that. whatever. Um, and then I include a document of what to expect with your new plants and trees. And it goes back to kind of like I said earlier, it's like plants go through transplant shock. It's not pretty. And it's like, I'm trying to circumvent people freaking out before they freak out. You know, it's like, this is what to expect. And then I also have some care tips like, hey, don't fertilize your trees for like the first year. You know, you're going to be watering your sod a lot until it gets established. It's like, I want to make sure they're successful and their project stays with them, you know, and, and doesn't just look crappy six months later. So that's kind of the expectation document. That's the resource I'm giving them. And then the final part of my email template or my post project um, package is I ask them for a review and I include links. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, if you had a great experience, I'd really like to, um, you know, we'd really appreciate it if you posted this online. Um, if you have any concerns, please contact me directly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a really nice sort of capstone to put on the whole, the whole project. And I think that that word unexpected, it's unexpected, you know, from the customer's perspective to have a nice box of cookies and a nice little note and a, a personal touch about the project. Really, really nice thing to do right at the end. Um, so guys, if you want to see a visual, like if you want to see what all this stuff looks like, we, we're speaking to this verbally. I, I think I think it kind of makes sense. You can get your head around all of this and why you would build this stuff. If you want to see an example of this, this will be available in the description. You can click the link there and and have a look at what Jamie's built. Um, really quick here, any, any tips for managing a huge backlog? I know this is a pretty um, common situation. I don't know if everyone is booked out as far in advance as you are, but certainly some would be. Anything, any sort of like practical tips to to manage that as a business owner? It's like almost dampening demand or or or, or managing expectations or just kind of getting through a, a huge, a big, long sales pipeline that's totally a production pipeline rather that's totally full. What what are you doing to uh, to deal with that? Totally. I mean, first I start by it's it's giving us the opportunity to really be a little bit harsher on our qualifying, you know? So um, one of the things that we do in the initial uh, call, when someone reaches out to us, you know, it's like, I don't even try to sugarcoat it. I just <laughs> drop truth bombs everywhere. Like we're booked out this far, you know, our designs cost this, and this is our process. And I, I mean, I say it nicely, I'm not <laughs> abrasive about it, but I don't beat around the bush with it. You know, it's like, I'm just like, this is the way it is. If this works for you, awesome. We want to work with you. If it doesn't, totally get it. We're not the company for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just try to, I don't even want them entering my funnel if those things don't work for them. Mm -hmm. So that's that was kind of like the first step of trying to like manage this is like, I don't want to waste anyone's time is like, let's just filter those people out up front. Coincidentally, we were still getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of leads. And I was like, okay, I need to up the ante on this, you know, filtering people out. So the second thing I did is I put it on our um, contact us website or that page on our website is it says we are booked out until 2023. You know, if you want to move forward, please fill out this form, right. you know, and just trying to not. I don't know. I don't even want to mess with anyone that isn't on board with that. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Take it a step further now because that's still, we're getting so much, our, our lead volume is up 20% year over year for the past three years. Right. And it's like, we really need to filter those people out. And it's, it's great. We're still like raising prices and stuff like that. So it's like, it's a great thing for us as a business, but I'm like, I need to get this down. So our next step is, is I'm adding a page on our website that's kind of like ready to start your project. And it's like a pop-up with our schedule, you know, and I'm just dropping these things right in front of them to try to like get those people out. Mm -hmm. So once someone has actually <laughs> made it through all these things 
and they're like, yes, I still want to work with you. Then I switch the tone and I'm like, okay, great. I want to work with you too, you know? And, and that's where, um, those packages, you know, like the pre packet, um, or I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the pre when someone email? commits like the expectation document mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. That's where that comes in to try to keep that momentum up. Like right. basically once I filter it out, then I turn on the charm. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Filter it out, then turn on the charm. It's like, I need to see that you need to hit certain criteria and then I'm going to be really nice. I'm not going to be, it's not that I'm being mean before I'm just being clear and, and, and setting expectations that are appropriate and, and being confident about that. And if you can jump through these hope, these hoops, then yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's get together and meet. So it's good. It's really, really good. I, I kind of like those tips about just keeping the demand at bay. So let's, uh, let's bring this home here, Jamie. We think about these, these four things that you've built, like pre-estimate, email, the consultation folder, that thing that goes out between uh, like the, the job getting sold and the project starting and then the post-project care package. What has all this great collateral done for you and your team over the last couple of years since building it? Yeah, I mean, it just saves us time. I mean, it's like, is it a lot of time to create this? Of course, on the front end. But once you have it, you don't have to build it again. You can tweak and modify it. So I think the first benefit that we have seen is that it just saves us a lot of time. Like now that I have these email templates built, I can just send them out. I'm not having to like recreate the wheel every single time. Um, You know, it also creates consistent messaging. Like we've talked about multiple times. It's like, I don't have to worry that customers are, you know, were they told about our schedule? Were they told? I I don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. I know they were, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, it it creates that consistent messaging and that consistent narrative across the board. Um, Yeah. And it's like, once you figure out your messaging too, it's like, it's really easy to, like I said, Taco Bell it. <laughs> and, you know, it's like you figure out the why choose us. And then all of a sudden now you have a web page, a document, it's in your email templates. And it's like, you can say it several different ways, but it's the same content. So, I mean, it's just, it, it's really sped things along and made, made the process a lot more automated mm-hmm. for lack of a better mm-hmm. term. Mm-hmm. And I'm sh- I, I suspect you can like if you, if you were to if you were to track this you 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 would have seen this in your closing ratio going up your pricing going up a lot of the conversions along the funnel have have definitely benefited as a result too right yeah no we've definitely seen um, close rates go up and we're getting better quality customers everything's really moving in the right direction but I think the biggest thing that we've seen is people honestly like i said they want to wait on our schedule which is mind-boggling to me (laughs) i personally would not want to wait a year and a half to get some work done Mm -hmm. but they do and that's fantastic we're very fortunate you know that this is working in that way it's the power it's a it's the power of a of a good brand you mentioned that this stuff was some was some time to build up front was was it expensive or did you did you do a lot of this on your own yeah so i did it all on my own um it's not expensive, it's time consuming, but it's kind of an ongoing process, right? So it's like, you know the questions your customers are want, they're gonna ask. Like, it's the same questions every single time. And so it's like, great, write an email template for it. You know, start making notes of it and then start creating resources, you know, that map to that. Mm-hmm. So um, it's not hard, it's not expensive, it just, like I said, takes time. So it's like, it's one of those great winter projects to really kind of map this out and figure out your plan, start putting together these, these resources. And once you see them working, it just inspires you to keep going. And it's like, Oh, this customer question came up. I'm going to put together a document for it. I'm going to put together an email template. And so it just becomes then maintenance, but I did all of it myself and I use Canva which is very reasonably priced and it allows someone who's not a graphic designer put together documents and resources that look like a graphic designer did. So I think that's, 
it's awesome that there's tools out there that kind of level that playing field, you know, that doesn't look like it was created on word canva canva is like one of the great sort of like hacks for marketers who if you you run a lean sort of marketing division and you you need to get cool stuff in front of people what people whether it be a simple ad that you're going to use on social media it's a brochure it's a pamphlet it's whatever you can look a lot more legit than you are in the graphic design space using canva there's a i think there's a free version or a trial version and then even the paid versions are really, really reasonable and, and pretty powerful. I'm embarrassed to say how much of our brand we actually do on Canva. We've used tons of graphic designers before. They're great. They're also expensive and it takes a lot longer. If you just need something quick out the door, check out Canva. Uh, so that's a really good tip. Okay, cool. Let's, um, this has been such a great conversation, Jamie. If people wanted to continue this, they wanted to pick your brain a little bit or ask you some further questions, where might they find you? Yeah, of course. So you could check out our website. It's boulderlanddesign.com. If you want to reach out to me, I'm totally happy to answer any questions or talk more about this. Um, My email address is jamie, J-A-M-I-E at boulderlanddesign.com. Love it. Thank you so much for being here today, Jamie. It's been a ton of fun and uh, I look forward to seeing you in person again soon. Totally. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Contractor Evolution. If you've already subscribed to our channel, consider sharing this episode with another contractor who you think needs to hear it.